Anyways, hello guys. What is up? My name is Dylan. Welcome back to the Popcorn Podcast, episode number six. Uh, and today we are going to be talking about the three hour anxiety filled nightmare horror comedy that is Bo is Afraid, directed by the one and only Ari Aster. Today I am joined by two lovely, wonderful guests, two new guests. Hello guys, welcome, welcome. Uh, so I think on that note, do you guys want to briefly introduce yourselves? <laughs> Should we start with the other <laughs> Speak to the people. Oh my god. Oh my <laughs> god. Okay. And and to the to the left we have. Uh, hi. Um. <laughs> Um, I'm Lola. I'm, um, I'm Lola. <laughs> I'm a film student. I've been in film school for the past four years. Um, I'm specialising in screenwriting, specifically horror and body horror. Uh, just, yeah, that's all I really have going for me. So, the as you can see, Lola is a prime guest for this uh, special episode on Birds Afraid. Uh, Ebony, do you want to you give that another go? Yes. <laughs> um, hello. Um, my name is Ebony. I'm an actress. And a, and a student, and a full-time sufferer. And, and very excited to be on the podcast. Yeah. Super excited. <laughs> Amazing. So now we have got those painful intros out of the way. Mm -hmm. Let's get on to the discussion. So, Bo is Afraid is directed by the man of the hour, Mr. Ari Aster. So I thought it would be nice to kick off this conversation by asking you guys, Lola, Ebony, what was your first experience with anything Ari Aster? Should we start, should we start with Lola? Let's, 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 I mean, let's like, keep... I mean, I watched, like, when I first got into his stuff, like, Midsummer and Hereditary had already been out for a while, but I'd heard about his other short films that are meant to be amazing. And, like, the strange thing about the Johnsons, I found it on YouTube, mm. like, in a really slow lecture one day, and it was only half an hour, and nothing was happening. So I was like, oh, I'll watch it in the middle of a very crowded, like, lecture, and I've never been more traumatised in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I had to step away from his stuff for a while, and then I found out I was going to be on... This episode. The, the episode. So I had to like power watch Midsummer and Hereditary, and they were both amazing. I loved them very much. I started mm -hmm. off with Midsummer, then Bo is Afraid, then finished on Hereditary. Ooh. I'm very happy with that order, though. That is quite an unconventional order. Yeah, but I did my best. Yeah, Good. Ebony. I think the first time I watched one of his films was Hereditary. Mm. I was very drunk, and nice. it was on my computer. And I remember seeing a specific scene that's like imprinted on my head, and I will never ever poke my head out of a car window ever again. Okay. Um, just because I used to do that quite a lot as a child. Um, what, seriously? <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Why? Uh, like, you know what dogs do? Yeah, I do. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> if they can do it, why can't I? Fair enough. Um, but you and I enjoyed it. I, I, I found it very funny, but then I think that's just because I enjoy dark things. Dark uh, things. I like the macabre. So you have a lot of dark humour. I was in. We'll you, you, you're, you're prone to a lot of dark humor. Yes. You, you have a lot of dark humor. You, yeah. yeah. I have an obsession with um, things when people die, in films, films, films okay. when people <laughs> die. Okay. And then I watched Midsummer. <laughs> yeah. Um, which I thought was, um, which was great. I, I love it. I would kind of like to go there and join these people. Um, oh. I was a bit <laughs> upset for the lack of diversity, but it was fine. I can see past that. I can okay. see their diversity card. And then Bo is Afraid. Mm -hmm. We saw that together. We did see it together, yes. Aww. Yeah, it was sweet. I still don't actually know whether or not you liked the film or not, which we'll get into very shortly. Um, it was an experience. Definitely, yeah. As for myself with Ari Aster, my first experience, like I, I would assume most people, was Hereditary. And I was lucky enough to watch the film back in cinemas when it came out. And I've had like a lot of memorable cinema experiences. Um, but Hereditary for me, like without a doubt, is the the ultimate sort of horror film experience that I've that I've had in this in the cinema. Um, I remember I watched it. So I, I think I was like 18, 19 at the time. And I used to watch a lot of horror films growing up. But I went to see it with a couple of friends. And by the end of the film, I like the four of us were all cuddled up hurdled up into balls. Whenever a film is able to make you uh, physically change your body language in a cinema, that's always a good sign. And like still to this day, uh, Hereditary remains one of my all time favorite horror films, um, for sure. Uh, as for Ari Aster, I think what he's done with Hereditary specifically is take sort of um, the like a somewhat familiar 
what goes bump in the night supernatural premise and sort of like really breathe new life into it and update it for modern audiences and a new sort of generation of horror fans um, through his unconventional style of filmmaking, which I think is really great. And he's obviously continued that onto Midsummer and Bo's Afraid, of course, as well. One of the things I also love about Hereditary is it's one of those films where I just love showing it to people and sharing it with people who haven't seen it just to see their reactions. For example, I have a friend uh, who absolutely hates horror films and he's a giant word I'm not going to say. Um, but I once tricked him into watching the entire the entirety of Hereditary by saying that it was a mystery thriller with Robert De Niro in it. <laughs> <laughs> because because it was his uh, favorite actor. So for the entire two hour runtime, this guy was waiting for De Niro to show up. Um, and of course, if you've seen the film, you, you, he doesn't show up, so whatever. Um, but by that time, it was, uh, it was too late. Um, but yeah, Midsummer as well, I saw in cinemas when it first came out and I, and I loved it too. I loved it for different reasons for Hereditary. And even though I wouldn't sort of say it's like a straight up horror film, it definitely uses a lot of horror elements. Um, and I think it's great because it's a very different kind of horror from Hereditary. Sort of the the approach to building tension is way more slow, methodical. Um, and that was like great because it was like Ari Aster, look at the range I have. Um, but yeah, just um, Ari Aster as a filmmaker. Have you guys seen many interviews with with Ari Aster? I watched a load in preparation. In prep, okay, this. okay. Um, no, I wasn't expecting him to be... He's such a nice guy. He's so, He's nice. so sweet. <laughs> but it's always the nice ones that are the, the, the most arranged, right? No, I think, because uh, in one of his interviews, he was like, oh, um, I was afraid I wanted to do that first. I wrote that years and years and years ago. I wanted to do it before Hereditary. Mm. But it was too ambitious, so they had to settle on Hereditary. Yeah. And then go through the rite of passage of being like, okay, you deserve to make this three-hour odyssey. Yes. Um, and then I know that the script changed a lot because Joaquin Phoenix had a lot of input on it. So they had to work together because it was very, like, personal role for him but um i know that like i really like his approach to family horror yeah i don't know i just i've never been so uneasy in like as in one of his films because i watched both of them like just in the middle of the day because i had stuff to do um of course of course yeah, <laughs> yeah. um but even then i was just like this is still i, I feel quite sick watching mm. this but i don't know i like them really yeah good. yeah i mean everybody likes them but I think when I was watching The Strange Thing About the Johnsons, like the top letterbox comment was, um, Ari Aster's parents, I bet they're like buried in unmarked graves on the <laughs> side of like a highway. His like, he needs to sort his stuff out with the family. And I was like, oh, family isn't like a running theme in yeah. his films. And then I watched But I Was Afraid and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe. makes make, makes sense. Maybe. Yeah, I think like just from my experience also with Ari Aster, it became very apparent to me very quickly that he is definitely one of the I'd say freshest voices in filmmaking today. I would say like he's one of them, like the pillars of specifically modern horror. I'd say I put him in like the same category as like, well, I put these guys in the same category as like Jordan Peele, um, Mike Flanagan, uh, even wrote like someone like Robert Eggers, the, all these guys, I think like horror cinema is in really good hands right now, yeah. which is something I'm really excited about because it sort of had like a dip during the 2000s when every horror film was the same. Um, just off the top of your head, guys, just a fun question. What are some of your favorite horror films? Just if you had to pick something. Jeepers Creepers. I've, I haven't seen it. I have not seen it, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. I haven't seen it either. I'm oh, very sorry. I take it back then because I feel like that's... No, 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 is, I, I mean... Um, I don't know. I like a lot of like old... I, I, yeah. <laughs> Jeepers Creepers, that's the answer. Well, let's uh, let's talk Bo is Afraid, because that is why we are here, ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to do a little plot synopsis for the film to kick off the main discussion. So here goes. So uh, the mild-mannered but paranoid-ridden Bo, played, of course, by Joaquin Phoenix, uh, embarks on a surreal odyssey to get home to his mother, and in doing so, is forced to confront his darkest fears. 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 Uh, but from his darkest fears, ultimately, comes the greatest adventure. Is that how you guys would describe this film? An, an adventure film? No. Because I think that's quite, yeah. I don't know. I mean, Odyssey is like, is definitely Odyssey. the word that I would use. He's not really like, it, he doesn't want to be on the adventure. Like, he doesn't want to do it. <laughs> what? <are you> <laughs> it's by force. Can I take it back? No, 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 no. I was, I was trying to think about if I thought it was an adventure. And, um... 
I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Like, the Goonies is like, that's kind of like an adventure film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so imagine him in the middle of that, just like yeah. running around. I feel like he'd fit in. Like, yeah, he would. Mm. I mean, he'd be terrified. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So when you guys watch Bo's Afraid, what was what was going through your mind as soon as the, the 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 film finished? Did you like the film? Were you satisfied with the film? Initial thoughts. Go, Lola. I was kind of like it, it took. You know when you have to like kind of just sit down yes. and think about what you've seen. Yeah. Because there's no way of putting into words what you've experienced. Mm-hmm. I watched it with Fontaine. Yeah. And our good friend know, Fontaine. Our very good friend Fontaine. Who should be on the next episode? Exciting. Or the episode after. But go yeah. on. Yes. Um, um, and she hated it, and I absolutely. <laughs> Um, loved it yep. but we were both kind of traumatised afterwards because there's so much happening all at once and there's no way of like describing what happened like I spoke to my parents afterwards and they were like what kind of film was it did you enjoy it I was like I don't think I could describe it mm. even if I wanted to mm. but I loved every second of it okay yeah okay and yourself Ebony because I know obviously the we, we went to see it with our respective others who you say with the people uh, that we choose to spend time with yeah um <laughs> But I didn't really talk to you much about after the film about the film. Yeah. So this is... I'm excited to hear what you have to say. I was, was so lot. confused. It was yeah. a lot. It was a lot. Like, in, in Midsommar, a lot happens, but mm. not as quickly and as intensely yeah. as what I was watching. So I I, I, I didn't really know what I, I was watching for a lot of it. Um, I did enjoy it, though. Mm. I was oddly satisfying at the end to kind of be like, oh. But then it was kind of just like a... Like we're gonna give you all of this, and then just like the yeah. TV just cut out, and you're yeah. sitting there, and you're like, yeah. I think um, for me, uh, when the credits hit, I was I don't know I, I wasn't annoyed. I was just I don't know if I loved it too much. But I think over the past week, because I've had like a week to reflect on it, the more I think about it, strangely, the more I like it. I mm-hmm. I still don't think it is as good as Hereditary or Midsummer or even the strange things about the, the strange thing the the, the strange yeah. thing about the Johnsons, uh, I much prefer those films. But this is a, a very, it's a very interesting film to say the least. Um, but I think while we're on that note, I want to ask you guys, what did you actually love about the film? Because you said you loved it, so you've. <laughs> do you want to do you want do you want to kick this one off? I think because I know that it was he wanted to do it before Hereditary. It was yeah. something that he'd been really fighting for, and I think because it's so bizarre and there's so much happening, like you can really tell that this is something that he wanted and he really loved about it so like it feels like a very personal, personal film yeah i know that i mean everybody's like oh there's something going on between him and his mother like mm. something happening there but i think it was like a really good way of like presenting anxiety i think it was an amazing performance from joaquin phoenix yep i like that um his mother mona wasserman mm. her logo is throughout the whole film so like both oh, Mike- well, I- his microwave, his TV dinners, like they're all like his apartment, they're all manufactured by her. So she's always kind of there. Yeah. Um, so it's not just like the people that work for her, it's like every aspect of his life, she is there. Yeah. Also, very quickly, guys, I haven't said s- spoiler alert. If you oh, haven't yeah, seen the film, um, please don't listen, don't watch any further, go and check the film out and then return to the discuss- this discussion. Pl- continue, please. Yes. I just, I think there was so much, even though it's like bizarre, it's mm. like there's so much attention to detail in it so it's yeah. like obvious that there were it was it was a passion project first and foremost um and i think because it was so bizarre like he just had fun with it because mm. like it's not a horror film and i think because i didn't know what to expect going into it but i think that helped because i spent the first 10 minutes trying to like sit down and figure out what i was watching and be really like smart and like film studenty about it and then it's like no i've i think i've just kind of got yeah like experience it and let it happen Mm. and that made me enjoy it so much more because there's a hundred things happening and you could spend hours like analyzing all of it but it's like i might as well just enjoy it yeah it is i think that was one of my the mistakes that i made going into the film because his other two films you always they're like kind of like puzzle boxes you're sort of trying to figure them out as you watch them and that was kind of what i was trying to do but then i just realized like there's no there's no way that i'm going to be able to dissect this all at once so just just sit back and just let everything unfold uh unfold in front of you for me i really enjoyed the first sort of half of the film the first two acts i want to say usually we talk about acts in the film as a three-act structure but i want to kind of say this is like a four-act structure the first act being him in his boat in his apartment and all the street stuff and 
that urban li- landscape and da 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 da. And then he, uh, the second act being his time as a patient with this family. Um, in the suburbs and then the third act being when he ventures into the forest and he's with this theatre company and then there's the the animated parable and then the fourth act obviously being when he makes it back to his mum but yeah I really really enjoyed the first two acts the first act for me specifically I thought that if the entire film was like that I would be giving it closer to like five stars i really enjoyed that i thought i felt like that segment had the best sort of blend of genres it's like part horror part um black comedy part satire i found it to be like a really sort of deranged but somewhat hilarious take on anxiety which is a thing that few filmmakers nowadays even attempt to do and even fewer can pull off like so well um i think the editing and the filmmaking was fantastic the editing in any Ariaster film is amazing you know he has those like it's, it's become a trademark of his where like a character sits down or like uh, and, and whatnot and uh, like a huge amount of time passes by in just a single like uh, a shot the whole first act was like this one big panic attack that just did not stop and i loved the intensity of that um and then it did stop when we see uh, a butt naked screaming Joaquin Phoenix get <laughs> hit hit by a hit by a van, and then Ari Aster uses his buttocks to cut to black. Yeah, I remember you giggled out loud <laughs> during the cinema. With that. But what were you? Uh, booty in my face. Okay? Yes, yes. Uh, what about you, Ebony? What did you actually like about the film? You know when that girl died. The paint with the paint. Yeah, that was so cool. So she cool. She was such a con. She was so joy. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. hate her so much. Okay. And she joined that page. She had issues. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she, she was so mean to Bo. She was. She was so mean to Bo, but the whole family had problems. Yeah. And what was she whispering to the guy the whole time? She was looking on his little. Yeah. So. um that like this that second act with he, when he, when he spends time with that family like the 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 movie slows down considerably obviously right but we'll touch um, upon that bit um if I, if I have to talk about the first bit yeah um that was probably the most scared that i was for Bo. yeah in that environment just because like if you can catch a break there, yeah yeah like i would not leave my apartment first of all the spider oh yeah Mm-mm. with the guy on the ceiling yeah <laughs> the sweat was just dripping on his face the whole time <laughs> and he falls into the bathtub oh my god um yeah no that traumatized me and then but it was kind of like fun and satisfying when the guy that had traumatized him so much you know the one that runs at him at the door was just on the floor dead did he get bitten by the spider is that how he died i think that is how he died yeah yeah, he had that... yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah no um yeah, that, that that first act for like the intensity to all throughout was it was chaos. Yeah, like I I, I was anxious. It made me anxious watching that. Yeah, and I think that's c- the c- sort of also why I like the second act and those two being together and that being the first half of the film was because even though it slows down in the second act, that intensity is sort of still there because he's now in an environment where he's uh it's like a much more calming environment but there are still characters who are clearly unstable like you have the guy who's suffering from ptsd and he's going yeah he's going crazy you have the daughter all he's trying to do is get home to his mom and in those first two acts that's always the thing that's in the back of your mind like he needs to get home to his mom that's his mission um and i thought that was great and it's partly why it didn't take to the the next two acts as well because that sort of sort of disappeared for a bit so the intensity and my investment with the film um wasn't there as much but yeah like that's what i thought of the first two acts have you guys got anything else to add that you, you want to add to that i think in when we go into like the theater production yes. company that's sort of when he starts to let go of his mother yeah so that might be why i mean i get why people really don't like hated the film or like just don't think it's as strong as his others but I think the whole thing is about him because he's like essentially just a big man child. Yeah. And he's never let go of like his helicopter mother. Mm. But it's him seeing what his life could, could have been. Could have been like, yeah. Like, I didn't, honestly, I didn't fully understand the animated sequence. Yeah, the same. But like, it, I don't know why, but I was there at the end and I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm so sad. Like, I just, I couldn't explain like why I was as sad as I was at the end of that. But. I think it was just because, like, even if you don't understand it, that's what his life could have been. And he's seeing this whole other, like... Because he's not who he could be. Mm. Because his mother is essentially ruined him because she's made him afraid of the world. Yeah. 
and seeing how he could have like gone out and been a person and had a family. Even though that story is very tragic though. It like is he tragic. Loses, yeah. But he does find them in the end. He does, yeah. But and then, yeah. I swear he's like, oh, but you're not mine because he didn't. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, but I couldn't have had you. So who are you? But for yeah. a second they were happy. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask, what did you guys think of the, the, the runtime? Okay, it's been, it being three hours. It was a lot. I, yeah. Fontina and I were drinking quite heavily <laughs> in the film. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I was, you know, we're talking about drugs and I was like, oh my God, I really need Lou. And it was like in the last bit when he's made it home. Yeah. And I came back as, um, what was her name? Eileen? Elaine. Elaine. Yeah. Yeah. As she died. Oh, you, so you missed, missed the, the whole bit. <laughs> I saw her leading him up to the bedroom. Oh my God. And then I, as I stepped back in, the two people just came in, picked her up and carried her off. <laughs> she was like, was and Fontaine was sitting there because it was just us like, yeah. in this screen. And she was sitting there like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry. What have I missed? She was like, um, he killed her. I was like, how? She was like, Oh, I still don't really shit. understand that. But yeah, yeah no. I swear, so his balls were really big, right? So what I'm guessing <laughs> is... That, no, 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 no. no it's it's, it's spoken that. about. Because she said, I really felt that. So in my mind, I was like, all of the, the, the swimmers mm -hmm. shot through her and zapped like, her like a fucking with gosh. such force that it ruptured her inside. So, because it just doesn't make sense that she would have the same thing that his dad had. No, yeah, this is exact because uh, the whole time that they were doing it, he was terrified that he was going to die because yeah. that's how his dad died. That's how his grandfather died. That's how, it, you know, it's pa then passed his down. His dad was in the forest. In the forest? What? You mean in the attic? Do you mean the guy that approaches him that in the man? forest? I think it was just somebody that worked oh. for um, his mother. Yeah, so this is the thing with the whole forest sequence. I think it was like visually incredible. It was nice to see like a, a whole new visual language explored in this film. Um, I loved the animation. I thought that was really cool. But my main issue with that, it, and this is where the problems started happening for me in the film, was I, I'd lost the film's identity. I was losing the film's identity because I thought I had it. And then I was like, okay, I don't know what's going on now. And then that whole parable of him sort of explores like family, it explores time and and all these sort of existential themes and then that this is when i feel like like the film was really starting to lose me yeah and then once again he runs off and then he basically just makes a beeline for his mother's house mm -hmm. right and and he gets there and the funeral has, is over so he's missed the funeral and then he's just chilling and then his childhood love elaine she was a milf she was so <laughs> funny. She was so sexy. Girl came with the. Mm. <laughs> she was. So... Yeah. That was my takeaway from that, but I, it was very tragic, her passing. Who, Elaine? Yeah. Or the tragic? Yeah. No, but she was a bad person. She was using him. She was using him because because uh, yeah because his mum was the head of like this massive corporation and obviously he was. Because she, everyone thought she was dead, or at least they thought that she was dead. He was going to inherit all of that, right? So that's the reason she slept. Yeah, that's yeah. right, Lola. Yeah, well, yeah. Was it about childhood love? Ab oh, absolutely no. not. <laughs> no. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> what did you think about those flashbacks, though? Everyone's saying that the kid looks like just like CGI. Yeah, I know. He looks really. It's really funny. But like a doll. He doesn't look real. <laughs> well, yeah, the kid who, Bo. the younger boat. Yeah. Bo. Mm, yeah. He, there was like a gloss to him. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. You know, like you know, like a Madame Tussauds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, like that's a great. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> but if we're going back to the forest sequence. Yes. It really lost me there. Yeah. Like I was, I was a. Sorry, Ari, but I was a bit bored. Okay. It, it like there was so much going on that yeah. I did I couldn't fathom anything at that point. Mm. And I was like, was the lady, that in the dream that he met the lady that he was sitting next to. Because they kind of look similar, and then and then and then the flood. This is the thing. This is the, uh, like I, it's it's kind of a mixed bag for me because of this this kind of thing. Because it's like, um, the film loses me, but the idea that we're still able to try and have a conversation and try and figure out these little things is quite great. It, it, it's it's great that like we have you know we're able to discuss this. So like that's why the whole film for me is a bit bittersweet. 
Um, because there are still for me, like, I don't know if I fully have grasped everything in the film. I think I get most of it, but there's still a lot to sort of unpack after it. But no, yeah, going on to sort of the fourth act when he um, gets home to the house and all that stuff goes down and um, Elaine dies mm -hmm. after that. And then his mum is not dead. His mum is alive. And then things start getting really weird. Um... You were you were there for the whole attic thing, right? So what I think happened was because I came back as they took away Elaine. Yeah, they cottoned her off. I think what happened is that's he's actually having a heart murmur, and the rest of it is like him having the heart murmur. Oh wow! So like that's why there's like the trial scene at the end, and like he drowns and all of that kind of stuff. I think because so that's he, like a afterlife sort of thing. Kind of like I think when the boat sink yeah that's like the murmur is finished and like that he's done oh wow um but i think because like he's the whole point is he's full of anxiety yeah. the whole film is like he probably d like the area that he lives in probably isn't that bad but like he's yeah. seeing it like that oh because no he's, for sure like, full of anxiety because when you're saying like it's probably not as bad i was just imagining like <laughs> like what it actually could be like it could be like the teeniest thing like it, no no like the, but that is street no but that sees it as that it's probably yeah like no for sure bad area, but, but like that is kind of sort of i mean what people with anxiety sort of go through you know they, they overthink absolutely everything when in like the whole thing when he's naked running at the start and the police officer like, like he's like oh, freeze like drop the weapon i drop the weapon like, he's like he's not holding it yeah he's like there's there's a there's a gap there between reality and what's in his mind and i think that's also great because obviously it allows someone like ariasta to really play around with that kind of stuff and go crazy with filmmaking and uh, ideas and whatever but yeah once again going back to the fourth act with his mother this is where i was like i, I, I don't really know what's re what's going on because it, it, be it became so so exposition heavy she was just screaming the entire time his mother is pretty terrifying yeah um and then the whole dream sequence where he's seeing his mother sort of open up the, the loft the attic and then we finally sort of see what's up there mm. now yeah his dad's a huge dick so yeah this is the thing so i've heard someone say that the <laughs> that the other bow is his dad but I thought it was his brother, like, originally when I watched the film, but then the penis monster. But why did it have arms? Yeah, this is the thing. This why is, was it that it size? It like a giant <laughs> bug. Like, it didn't really look like a... No, th this is where I started to get a bit like, I don't know what the hell... Because because this is like Ariaster's like, it, it became very self-indulgent at this point, yeah. and I was like, mm, you did, I don't know if you really had to go and do that. Like, it was kind of, I was, like, I was, I was on board, but then I started to fall off and then that happened and i was like what the hell am i i, I, I literally i was like oh fuck this i don't I, I don't know if i can do this i felt like that was just for shock value i don't really know what that added what is that like what what place does that have i don't know do you have an do you have an answer for this maybe yeah it's a symbol yeah of his fear of dying because of his penis yeah and he's kept it like locked away up in the attic because his mum locks things up there and it's grown and grown and grown over the years and turned into this huge thing that obviously we find out like it, it, it isn't real anyway so it's it's created a monster do you know what you know and then the, the yeah. shriveled up bow is like the bow he could have been and it's like i don't know it could be but also, you, you it, had something there though but also if it is like another child and she hated Bo that much. Why didn't she just swap the removal? Yeah. That's what I would have done. I, don't, I, I I'm not sure either. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, he basically almost strangles his mother to death or does strangle his mother yeah. to death and then really doesn't hurt. because she comes back. And then there's the whole thing where he leaves the house and then on a boat and then goes into this sort of mystical arena and then he's on trial. And you see he's been on trial for the, the entirety of his life. And then he's found guilty, I guess, yeah. and then dies. And that's the end. And the credits play through. Yeah, he just gets blown up. I th so, yeah, I think that's when, like, the heart murmur, like, finally, like, yeah. kills him. But I think throughout the film, it's like, so in the second bit where he's in the family's house, I don't think he's actually in the house. I think he's just in a regular hospital. Yeah. And, like, 
the dad is just like a regular surgeon and like the mum is like a nurse yeah. and just and the other like the, the kid is an, uh, another patient and yeah. the other guys yeah yeah and the, no the other guy's like a security guard and that's why he's like running after him because like he's managed to escape mm. and that's why he like crashes the the oh, fuck, what he's always it? trying to f he's always trying to find yeah, him and then and he dies got, like, by the, the penis monster right yeah, yeah. And he's got like the um the tag on his yeah yeah, leg yeah. And just stuff like that so I don't think I don't know. I think when he's like knocked out in the woods, the theater thing, like the whole thing is like a dream sequence for him. It's not just like the animated sequence. Yeah. And then he wakes up and he just goes straight to hitchhiking and going straight to home to his mother. Yeah. But then he has like the little statue that he gives to like the woman in the woods. Yeah. But then that same statue is like in his mum's front garden. Mm. I don't know, but... The, the whole thing, there's yeah. Lots of like little things that like run through. There's, there's a lot of like cutting chains in this film. Yeah. So like they have like the shot of like the cut umbilical cord in the beginning, and then in the the theater thing they like cut the chain from like his ankle, mm. and then when he goes home he sees like the chandelier that like killed his mother. It's like hanging from a chain. It's been like cut. Like there's a lot of that kind of stuff, and I don't know if it's like his mum is like holding him down, tying him down, or whatever. But there's like lots of like little running things and I don't know, there's probably more that I'm missing out on. I feel like I have more questions than answers. Than I have answers yeah. To yeah. yeah. I'm going like every point that you make, especially you. There's like, probably I'm loads missing. that we are missing. Yeah. But I think like just if I were to ask if we were to ask Ariasta like what the best way to watch this film is or can you explain this? Can you explain this? I don't think he'd give us the answers because part of the, the, the joy and the excitement of experiencing something like this is because it is so open to interpretation. Why would you want to take that away from someone? Yeah. Right? Mm. Like you've come up with, you both have come up with great like sort of theories and this and that. And like we all have different perspectives and that's great for a film like this because we don't get it like as often, you know, when we go to see films. Really? The fact Shut up. that it made me confused. Yeah. Because I hate watching films and I'm like, Oh, well, that like, was it. That, that like it, it had a conclusion that yeah. I'm just like, well, I saw that coming. But this, I, 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 it's bothering me that I, I can't quite place like a lot of the things. Yeah, you're like, thinking about it a lot. Yeah, that you watch it, and I, I, I will rewatch it. I'll probably watch it know, at some three point. Hours long, but like, yeah, maybe twice more to really understand how I feel about it, and the fact that that's what I want to do mm. is that in my eyes, it's a good film because a lot of things you watch these days, and you're like, well, it came to a conclusion, done, and 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 that, that's really it. Yeah. Um. So I feel like. That's it's, what I want from more films these days is to have that confusion and to be annoyed. I don't, when things annoy me, I know that it is it's a mm. positive thing. Whereas these days I watch things and I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. And it makes me not want to watch films anymore. And this yeah. makes me want to watch more things that... Ha we, wouldn't, you know. we wouldn't be having this amazing conversation if the film wasn't this thought-provoking in the first place, right? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. to sort of wrap up and uh, on a final note, Lola and perhaps Ebony as well, if you want to build off this in a, in a second, I think it's fair to say that you sort of the majority of time have gravitated more towards sort of independent films and like weird art house films and uh, like the smallest sort of more character driven films as opposed to massive blockbusters. Why do you think that it's important that we support films like this? Why do you think it's important that we support independent films? Because they're just more fun. Like I can't like, I don't know. We watched Doc Strange, Multiverse of Madness, yeah. Sam Raimi, you know, one of the pillars of horror, yep. Evil Dead, all of that. Disney gutted that man. Mm. There was like five minutes of Zombie Strange. Great. Love that. Wanted more of that. And then nothing, nothing else. else. Mm. It was the most like, like that film was just such a handful of nothing. Yeah. Because they were like, it's a cosmic horror. Like we're giving Sam Raimi so much control. And I was like, oh, okay. Mm. Cosmic horror, that's really tough to do. But like, I'm sure it will fit in with Doc Strange. I've never been more disappointed, disappointed. with like the CGI eye on his head at the end. Mm. Copy and copied and pasted on. Mm. I was fuming <laughs> with that film. But, like, I don't get that same sort of, like, disappointment from films, like, smaller ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just because, like, you know that it's, like, somebody's fought to make that and yeah. it's, like, that might be the only thing that they have to their name and so they've made it as good as they can and it's so personal and it's just, it's... It's their life. It's like, it's what they want and they wouldn't be making it. Their visions aren't compromised. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's not Disney being like, you can't say the F word. Yeah. Yeah. It's for kids. It's for family audiences. Yeah. We'll keep it at 12A. It, it's not that. It's like, make it, what you want to make and then it's yeah. like the unfiltered process. It allows for complete or as much 
creative control as possible to for these filmmakers to express their creativity to tell their stories and to sort of realize their vision um and also i feel like it's a good like it's great because it gives spotlight to directors who wouldn't sort of usually get that but they're able to generate like buzz for them and sort of start making it through these smaller films like ariasta um but yeah no e e ebony uh, anything to to add to that um do you prefer watching smaller films as opposed to the bigger films or is it like just a mix of everything because i think that's me i mean i i, I love everything but um, lola is clearly on the the other side I like i'd say i know you do i know you do you know i'd say like smaller films yeah, yeah. just because um I mean, having, like, from an actor's perspective, yeah. um, the process on smaller films is a lot more, like, community-based. Like, everybody's mm. part is equally as appreciated, I find, like. Yeah. When I watch these big block blockbuster films and stuff, it just kind of feels like it's just about money. Very corporate. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, we, we need to do this, and we're going to do this, and how much money can we make? Mm. And it doesn't feel personal at all. Okay. And it's not really tailored to a lot of people. It's specifically, like, aimed at a specific... Mm like a bunch of people I find whereas with like smaller independent films because they've been like curated by a whole bunch of different people that aren't necessarily going to be like brought into the rooms on bigger films they yeah. have their little bits for everyone um I mean that could be like completely wrong no no for like, sure that's mm. the, personally I think that, that's how I no I think that's really great that you mention it because for from an actor's perspective not just how we watch these films but also the stuff that goes behind the scenes into making those films and you know because th there's been so many big projects big blockbusters that have had so many sketchy and um just um not great productions but with these smaller films it's like smaller teams so they're able to the synergy is is much more mm -hmm. and a lot of the time you can actually feel that on screen like you were saying at the start um like the film feels very personal to to Ari Aster and he wanted to make this before he did Hereditary I think like uh, I think it's great. I love when like directors who have proved themselves, I'd say, like Ariasta, even like Christopher Nolan or Damien Chazelle, like Christopher Nolan with Tenet or Damien Chazelle with Babylon, or even like someone like Noah Bumbach with um, with White Noise, um, Wes Anderson with The French Dispatch, like these proven directors, they're able to take a budget and the studio or whoever's backing them says, go and do whatever the hell you want to do, and yeah. Um, I, I love that and even if I didn't love this film like fully I love what it stands for like, on a final note in comparison to the strange thing about the Johnsons hereditary midsummer where would you put Bo is afraid in terms of your personal preference where would you rank the film in comparison to Ariasta's other works it's so different from his other works though because they personal preference personal preference so if you had to if you had to pick one and then if, no so if you had to pick Two, two of Ari Aster's films. What would you, which, which would you pick? Hereditary and Strange Thing About the Johnson. Okay. Yeah. Yourself, Ebony? Um, well, I haven't watched. The oh my god! I think you're, you're. I think you're gonna. So, you're I think you're gonna love the film. I, like I watched it last night because obviously you told me, and I was like, you okay, have I have to, to watch, watch this it. before the pod. I thought Hereditary, like, was the most disturbing thing, and it is very disturbing. Don't get me wrong, but just like that short film. Oh my, like my, my jaw was on the floor the entire time. I know, right? Sorry. Mm -hmm. I shall watch that and then I'll be able to, I mean, currently it would have to be like Bo's Afraid and Midsummer, just because I really cannot remember a lot of Hereditary. Okay. So I'm going to have to go back and watch it and then I feel like they'll probably be the, the two. The yeah. two that I know the least about in my mind right now will probably overtake. Bo's Afraid is great, but I'm so confused. You're so confused. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's a film that I think all of us will rewatch at some point. Yes. Um, yeah, um, but like I said, the strange thing about the Johnsons, if you guys haven't seen the film or even heard of it, it's only 30 minutes and you can find it online on YouTube for free. Watch it and <laughs> <laughs> strange thing about Johnsons, I will leave it linked in the description box below. Thank you so much to my wonderful guests for uh, coming on the podcast and chatting about Ariasta, about Bo is Afraid, about horror films and art house films. It's been great. Thank you both so much. Thank, Thank you, Lola. Thank you, Ebony. Bye-bye.
Um, <laughs> I will leave their links in the description in case you want to follow what they're doing. They're doing some great things, like I said, or like Lola said, she's a writer and um, Ebony is an upcoming actor as well. Um, so I'm sure you guys will be seeing them around at some point for sure. Oh my God, so uh, far. Huh? Thank you. No, but I'm being serious. Um, but yeah, guys, that is it from me. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, and I will catch you very soon <laughs> Don't point me. in the next episode. <laughs>